Well, they can't all be winners, folks. You know, sometimes this happens. Uh, getting creamed by the Milwaukee Bucks in what could very well be an NBA Finals preview. Uh, the Warriors fall 128-111. Kylan Mills and I will break it down. Maybe there were some positives in there. I know there's a lot of negatives, and we're right back at it the next day in Indiana. We're going to break it all down next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. You can follow Kylan Mills on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I don't have a TikTok account, by the way, but I have no idea how to use it. Uh, you can follow Kylan on all those platforms at Kylan Mills. You can follow me, Cyrus Otzes, on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. Kylan, there, is there a way to positively spin that, your reaction to the Warriors <laughs> losing the first game of the road trip? Yeah, I'm trying to come up with a positive spin and studying the box score and racking my brain. I mean, it was just, it, it was not pretty. Uh, to me, the one thing that stood out, especially in the first half, is just the Bucks came out and it really felt like just imposed their will, played more physical, and just beat up the Warriors down low. Points in the paint at halftime was, gosh, what was it? I had the stat up too. Uh, but 24 to 8, I believe. And then 24 to 12 was the rebounding battle, the Bucks with a major edge. So to me, especially the first half of this game, like that just stood out as being a major, you know, downfall fall you know downfall for the Warriors and it's part of the reason why I've been advocating for the Warriors to add another big to this roster I do think that in certain matchups the lack of size is going to be detrimental to the Golden State Warriors and this was one instance I also thought it really did hurt though that Andrew Wiggins didn't play and continues to be out uh, because the Warriors struggled to shut down Giannis even though he was having an off shooting night like Giannis can just like drive and get to the cup almost at will whenever he wants. Um, and, and, you know, that's why he's one of the best players in the NBA. So you get got to give him a lot of credit. But I just thought that the Warriors were getting pounded inside. And, and you know, mm. the Bucs were imposing their physicality on the Warriors. And I think the lack of size really hurt. Um, in terms of positives, I always want to at least mention one or two. I mean, Jonathan Kaminga had a couple of garbage time threes, as did Dante DiVincenzo. But I thought this was good experience for Kaminga. He did take on some of that defensive workload on Giannis. Um, I think he was matched up against Middleton. So I think it's good experience for him. And he did go six for 10 from the floor and put up 19 points. Um, so I think that's a positive, uh, one positive spin or one thing to look at. Although he didn't rack up too many rebounds, just one rebound three assists uh, so it wasn't terrible but I think it's good you know experience for him to really be the player who's being relied on to guard some of the best players in the NBA that's how you get better um, mm -hmm. and then I always like the contributions of Dante DiVincenzo I thought that tonight as well um, he finished with 16 like I said, a couple of garbage time threes, but still seven rebounds. He had two steals and almost had a third, two assists. Um, so he continues to be a piece off the bench that I really like. Um, in terms of the starters, you know, just not a banner night for Steph Curry or anyone I thought in the starting lineup. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a tough loss. Yeah, it was brutal. I mean, Bobby Portis was just it was one of those games it, it reminded me a lot of the Warriors Suns games earlier this year or the one game was it oh, twice I think they played where I, I felt like just like in that Phoenix game the Bucks just couldn't miss weirdly they were missing three pointers but it didn't seem to matter uh, Bobby Portis is who stuck out to me the most he was 11 for 15 from the field grabbed 11 rebounds one of those rebounds was like literally just right over Anthony Lamb who Lamb had him boxed out perfectly, but he's 6'5", and Bobby Portis was like, no, I can just reach right over you and, and knock it in over the back hall and uh, and still get this. Um, yeah, it was, you know, I, and I, I want to uh, highlight this uh, <laughs> from this uh, this chat comment from Smile, God loves you, 7'7". Seven, seven. Uh, I like the part that says, Lamb is too small and stumpy. 
That's what, <laughs> he does. He looks stumpy out there. He does. Look, he actually had a decent game. I, 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 yeah, you I can't blame like him. That. But I will say this. Uh, the fact that Moses Moody only had two minutes of action going into the fourth quarter was absurd. Um, I, I, I still do not understand what the game plan is here. I, you know, I, look, you played him two whole minutes, on, uh, you know, for the first three quarters of the game and you were getting your ass kicked for the entire game. So that strategy is not working. Um, I understand Wiggins didn't play. I want to sh- uh, share with you something, Kylan, that I did decided to do some research on, and I would love to get your feedback as to the why of this. The Golden State Warriors entering the season have been synonymous with third quarter dominance, Right. Uh, and I decided to look at the the previous year's plus minuses for third quarters uh, last year in their uh, world championship season. The, the, it, was, it was one of their more meager third quarter stats in terms of differential, but they were still plus 2.7 led the NBA, right? Uh, 2018-19, the last time they made the, the NBA finals, uh, right? Was, was that the Durant year? Yeah, they were actually set. Yeah. NBA that year I, I take that back they were tied for first in the NBA uh in in third quarter differential with the Bucks at 2.6 but then you go back even further uh 2017-18 there were plus 5.1 led the NBA 2016-17 one of the most dominant seasons in NBA history there were plus 5-4 leading the NBA uh you can see the pattern here right in years where they're successful they lead the NBA uh or at least tie for the lead in third quarter differential this season, they're not doing good in third quarters. And I don't know if that's a Mike Brown thing. I don't know what it is. But unlike previous seasons, when the, 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 the halftime adjustments were made, third quarter Warriors come out, they're revved up, they're on fire, they blow away the opposition. That's not happening this year. Their, their third quarter differential this season for the Golden State Warriors is plus 0.9. Uh, which is 11th in the NBA. What do you think is going on this year for the Golden State Warriors versus previous years where that third quarter dominance is, we're not seeing it. It doesn't exist. Any thoughts? I know I'm just throwing this at, out at you right now. Obviously, we're this is conjecture. We're spitballing. But what do you think is going on with the third quarter? Because they used to be the quarter where the Warriors would separate themselves and you would usually pull away and win. Not happening this year. Why do you think that is? That's an, that's an interesting stat to talk about because, the, you know, the Warriors have dominated in third quarters uh, during this last, you know, their dominant stretch of play in the NBA. And to me, that time at halftime in the locker room is important for two reasons. One, uh, which team can do a better job of making adjustments and then executing them um, at halftime and then coming out and executing once the whistle blows. And then two, how can the team regroup and motivate each other and come out wanting it more and come out as the hungriest team? And to me, you know, as far as I think other teams are doing a better job right now of making adjustments against the Warriors in the third quarter. But like a big factor that I'm seeing is just the level of intensity and wanting yes. it because to yes. me, that's where the Warriors have been significantly lacking this season. Um, and it's not, you know, to, that to me has stood out more than like any type of like tactical changes, game plan changes from like half to half. To me, it's just like the Warriors have come out flat in the second half and in third quarter specifically. And Whereas I just feel like in other seasons, I don't know, you know, what it is, if it's a certain, you know, the members of the team this year, the chemistry, is it still the hangover from the championship season? I don't know exactly what that factor is, but something that was happening in the locker room at half times of the Warriors successful seasons, I think was leading to the team being more motivated yeah. coming out of halftime and then also just, you know, playing more intense and wanting it more. And that's where I feel like this kind of all rolls into that. There is a lack of joy surrounding the team this season compared to past seasons, or at least mm-hmm. especially during this early part of the season where they struggled. It's something the coaches and players have addressed. They've talked about just, there hasn't been the same level of joy in the game. And, and that has led to a lot of the defensive struggles, which to me also have been, yes, some tactical things, some bad one V one defending, but also just like intensity, hustle, mental focus. And to me, that kind of carries over into, you know, what's happening in the third quarter. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. The, the aggressiveness was not there. Uh, Solomon's Tech has a comment about Andre Iguodala. I forgot we're calling him a new name now, Izel. Uh, Izel, once again, uh, was wearing a new outfit. I love someone tweeted something about how Andre Iguodala's goal this year uh, is to just uh, come up with 82 creative outfits for all 82 games. 
that he does not play in. I hope that's not the case. We got to be a little patient with him. He will start playing at some point. Um, we got a lot more to talk about. Uh, first, got to give some love to Rocket Money, which is a great way for you folks to save money because the entire premise of Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is to prevent you from wasting money on unnecessary subscriptions, right? So look, 80% of people have subscriptions they forget about. That's a staggering number. Maybe, look, it's an unused Amazon Prime account. Maybe it's some certain items within your Amazon Prime account that you've accidentally subscribed to instead of buying. Um, could be a Hulu account that you never use or another streaming platform. Um, it, the point is you could be wasting money and Rocket uh, Money is there for you. So why don't you cancel those unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today? Go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. Uh, that's rocketmoney.com slash locked on NBA. You are locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. For making Locked On Warriors your first listen today, for your second listen after us, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow Kylan Mills on most social media platforms at Kylan Mills. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of calls in the chat for size. You've been echoing that sentiment a lot. Um, Jermichael Green tonight uh, was awful. <laughs> he was awful. Um, he did He did make a three. Bravo. Can you bring, up Andre, he... can you bring up Andre FRBK's comment recently that his three-point shooting is newborn baby poopy booty cheeks bad? <laughs> that's, I've not heard that before. But <laughs> that's an what was the user's comment. name? RB something? <laughs> Andre. Andre said that. <laughs> oh, Andre said that. Okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't care. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I'm trying to find it. Um, right yeah, he was awful. He, he was absolutely awful. Top. Yeah. Oh, here is, uh, I can't find it. I don't know. I give up. I tried. Um, but he, look, his stats that I were ridiculous. I think he played 13 minutes and was, and fouled out in 13 minutes of play. Uh, that is correct. One for four from three. He did make one. Uh, those were his only points. Um, look, and, and the problem with the Jermichael Green scenario is if he's not hitting three pointers, he's not a stretch five. He's not a stretch four. He's a stretch nothing. So all you're using them for is rebounding, defense, and that is where your call for another big really is valid, in my opinion, because if all you're using them for is to be your center who can't shoot, there are probably better options right there. You mentioned Boogie Cousins. I'm not opposed to that. I don't know how realistic that is. You know, we, we both echoed Dwight Howard. Um, are there any other names that stick out to you out there? And What are your thoughts on Jermichael Green? Is that an experiment that you think is over? Is there still value for him to stay on the roster? Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I I don't. I have not been impressed by Jamichael Green, and I don't think he's a five. Like I don't think he's going to cut it at this team at a five. Um, it just he's not doing it. And then the problem is that the Warriors were hoping James Wiseman would be an option there, and James Wiseman right now is totally out of the picture because he still needs more time to develop. Um, so I I th personally think that the experiment should be over. Um. Mm -hmm. No hate to Jamichael Green. I just think it's not working. He's not what we need. Oh, yes, you found the comment. Yes, it's I found not it, yeah. right now. He's 8 of 41 from three this season. And so, you know, there you go. There's the stat line. And I, I just was laughing. Read the, rest, the, read the rest of it again. Newborn, that is newborn baby poopy booty cheeks bad, according to uh, our wonderful listener viewer, Andre. So thank you for that very descriptive uh, and eloquently put language regarding- And objective, very objective, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, it's not working. Clearly it's not working. And I think a change needs to be made. Um, as far as like who else was, is out there who's currently a free agent, like I don't know. To me, like the other names that pop up that are some that we've repeatedly talked about, like with Podol and several others would have to be trades. Um, and I just don't know 
what the Warriors will be willing to give up. And then Bob Myers is traditionally not a GM who likes to make midseason trades. Correct. Period. So how realistic is that? How seriously would the Warriors consider, you know, making a trade? And something that they've really dug their heels in on, even last season, um, when some of the concerns came up about size, was we don't need size, we don't need this, we don't need that. So I just don't even know, you know, how seriously are the Warriors looking to even make any changes? I think to me, from the outside, it looks like they need an addition and they need more size. But is yeah. it realistically going to happen? What what are you, what would you put the odds at, Cyrus? Uh, I, I like five percent. I it's like you said, the only trade, and I and I try to think back, and it's very rare for Myers to pull those midseason trades. Uh, Andrew Wiggins was a big one, but again, that was kind of like a wash season. That was a trade for the future. Um, I I, I still think ultimately Wiseman is going to be the player that they're going to count on. Um, you know, he's doing great in the G League. He he could help. I don't see how he would hurt at this point. Um, but again, I, people throw out some other names here, right? Like Tristan Thompson. I don't know, like Blimey Maynard, you, you write that he knows the system. I don't know what that's in reference to. I, he's never played for the Warriors. So I don't know how he would know the system, but, um, he would not be a bad option. Tristan yeah, Thompson I don't hate Tristan Thompson is an option either. I mean, coming just, off the bench where you don't need him to do much, you know, or you don't need him to score a lot. Like sure. Correct. Correct. And then, um, Hassan Whiteside's another one. Kind of slow. I don't. I don't know if that's a player the Warriors would gamble on. They they like some speed uh, with, with their bigs. Um, same with Derek Favors. I definitely don't see that happening if he's available out there. Um, yeah, and if those two are slow, uh, smile. God loves you. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, we called your name before. Smile. God loves you. Seventy seven again writes that Tristan Thompson is slow. If that's the case, then you're definitely not going to be adding any of those other names. Yeah, um, I I think. Oh, yeah, I think ultimately Wiseman is going to be the 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 fix for that. Fix might be a strong word, but at least he's going to be the option they go to. I I have faith in him. I've I've been watching these Santa Cruz games closely. I think Wiseman, I I I just want to see him get a shot, you know. But Kerr again is frustratingly has like the, the shortest leashes on these players imaginable. I now call I call these now confidence killing short leashes because I don't see how it could build a confidence to literally yank a player after two minutes like you did with Moody tonight. I don't see what the point is in calling up Wiseman if you're not going to play him. Um, I, one player that did play good tonight, I don't know if you agree with this or not, is um, James Wiseman. Not James Wiseman. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga. I thought Kaminga played great. Uh, he, he, he played 27 minutes, shot 6 of 10 from the field. His three-point shot, I, I'm telling you, that Utah game was such a game changer. It, was, it really was like a coming out party for him. If that phrase is still... PC. I don't know if I can use that anymore, actually, but whatever. You get the point. Um, it was definitely his breakout game was was the Utah Jazz game. Like it, besides the fact that he realized he can attack the rim, he's virtually unstoppable. You also saw a, a, an added level of confidence with this three point shot tonight. He went three for five from beyond the arc. He scored 19 points again in 27 minutes. Um, I saw Izel Izel coaching him on the sideline, which has been Iguodala's clearly his biggest value this year is his mentorship and coaching. Uh, on the sideline, um, what were your thoughts on Kaminga tonight? I, I thought he looked great. What do you think? I was, no? yeah, yes. I, I mentioned him right off the top in my initial thought. Oh, sorry, that was okay. one of my positives was bringing up his shooting percentage, his three point shooting percentage. A couple of those threes were in garbage time, but still, um, I thought that he did well, especially handling the defensive workload he was handed. Um, and I think that he something Steve Kerr said the other night, which is true I think he's getting there is that Jonathan Kaminga can be a good alternative option defensively to shutting down the opposition's best player um you know and that's a role that he's starting to step into while Andrew Wiggins has been injured and I think that he's getting there I think he's doing much yeah. better shutting down Giannis completely like no one in the league can do that I mean he's one of the best players in scores and when he drives with force to the rack like he's almost unstoppable but I thought Jonathan Kaminga did uh, as good as possible. And I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, I mean, yeah. I think for him being a two-way player is going to be the critical piece to him continuing to get minutes and, and ultimately to being a, an all-star one day in this league, which I believe he can be, but because I think his defensive strengths um, really warrant him being on the floor now for the Warriors. Um, and then offensively, 
defensively, like if he starts hitting threes, great. If buckets start going in, great. I mean, to me, the biggest thing is just when he's not forcing it. Um, but I thought he played well. I thought Jonathan Kaminga played well. I thought he contributed in the minutes that he was in. Um, I would have liked to see more Moses Moody. I agree with you just while we're on the topic of young players that yeah. two minutes going into the fourth quarter was not enough. It's a game you're already losing. And to me, it looked like towards the end of the third quarter, the Warriors were already waving the white flag. And that's something my husband said to me. He's like, why does it seem like the Warriors have just like cashed this one in? Like we've seen them come back from 18 point deficits. Like we've seen them come back from ridiculous deficits late in the game. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think the Bucks even knew that because they weren't necessarily resting everyone down the stretch, not so late, late in the game, because you never know what Steph Curry is going to do. And you never know what the Warriors can pull off. So I was a little bit surprised just to see, I felt like, you know, the Warriors were kind of already cashing it in and Moses Moody hadn't been given any kind of shot. Um, so I would like to see more of him. I don't think that James Wiseman would have been the answer tonight. Um, I do think they needed size, but I, you know, I don't know that he was going to be shutting down Giannis or, or I mean, you know, Portis or Lopez, but I do think that at some point he will be a good option off the bench. To me, he's just not ready. And like I've been saying, all season is that I don't want to say that he's not going to make it in the NBA, but I'm just saying, I don't know that right now he's ready to be a key contributor in the second unit for a championship team. That's all I'm saying. Like I'm not on the like trade Wiseman. He's, you know, give up on Wiseman. I'm not on that. I'm not going that far. So I just want to make that clear. But like my concern about adding someone is just that, you know, I just, I don't know. Like I just don't see him being ready to championship level by the postseason. But I do agree with you because I've watched some of his stuff in Santa Cruz. I still see that potential. You still see that athleticism. And I see improvement. But is it going to be at a championship level? And that's such a hard expectation on these Warriors young players that I, you know, I just feel like it's a really high bar. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I really think it's okay. Look, we can't, we don't have to agree on everything. And if anything, it makes greater content on the program. But I really do think Wiseman, I believe it. He can, I think he can give you minutes in the postseason this year. We just gotta see them, and, and and when and I will say this: I am no longer going to judge a player, and I don't think anyone should. If you want to be fair to these individuals, I don't think you should judge a player based on five to ten minutes of first half action, followed by a quick yank of the leash, and then you never see him again. Because I, that's just not enough time to to gauge how someone's doing. Like you know, sometimes athletes need to warm up, develop a rhythm. Uh, you know, get their feet under them. And not everybody is just a quick, you know, just is that quick to to get going in a game. Sometimes you need time. We've even seen that with Stephen Curry sometimes where he's had slow first halves. And I would like to see Moody, again, two minutes in the first three quarters of play was just ridiculous to me. And then James Wiseman, if he's called up again, and I'm sure that'll happen soon, I want some real minutes. And then let's judge him. And like no cap right here, all the criticism on Wiseman, whether it's his defense, whether it's the foul trouble, they were, those were all valid. But this is also a young player who's developing right before our eyes. And he's already, like, insanely, incredibly advanced in his development just from what he was, like, two months ago. Um, I, I, you know, and, and again, even two months ago, we never saw him for extended runs. He was in, he was out super fast. I just and, – and I do like what Smile of God Loves You 77 wrote because I was saying this as well – that Jordan Poole and Wiseman had great chemistry to start the year. We were seeing those lobs. I don't know. I just I just want to see these kids play. That's all. I'm, when we come back, I have some positive news to wrap this show up with um, because this game was certainly not doom and gloom. It was one road game. Uh, you know, I you can't just Against hang your head. an NBA championship caliber team. Like, I would be shocked if the Bucs are in the NBA finals. I know you teased that at the, at the beginning that this could this could be like a championship caliber, uh, you know, two teams. And I think the Bucs, you know, are contenders again. Absolutely. I'm with you on that. Um, first, got to get some, game, you know. Yeah. <laughs> first, got to give some love to LinkedIn here uh, and more specifically LinkedIn jobs. Uh, these days, every new potential hire, if you're a small business owner, can feel like such a high stakes wager for your small business. In a lot of ways, if you're if you're hiring someone, you're bringing someone into a family. You want to be smart about it, right? You want the right person. And that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. I don't know if uh, any of you folks know this. Colin, I don't know if you know this. I used to own a surf shop in San Francisco for two years on the corner of Union and Fillmore. It was called San Francisco Surf Company. And if LinkedIn Jobs was around back then, 
I could have used it. I could have hired some better talent for my surf shop. I saw some great employees, but it would have been very resourceful. And it's also helpful for anyone else out there who's, again, looking for high quality talent for your organization. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post a job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, wrapping the show up, following the Warriors, disappointingly losing to the Milwaukee Bucks, 128 111. Here is some good news for you. All right. Despite the fact the Warriors have, and this is very disappointing, they have the second worst road record in the entire NBA. They have the worst road record in the Western Conference. Uh, second worst, to put it in perspective, are the Houston Rockets, the San Antonio Spurs, the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, they all have better road records. That's not cool. Um, the only team that has a worse road record than the Warriors are the Orlando Magic, who are just 1-11, the Golden State Warriors 2-12 and on the road. Yet despite that, and that's indicative of a team who's, who's again, the, the bench is, is synonymous with the struggle because bench players like the Warriors have, who are young, who are new, um, they obviously feed off the home crowd energy. When they're on the road, they're not getting that. So uh, it's that part of it's showing. It'll hopefully improve. But despite the fact that the Warriors have the second worst road record in the NBA, and it's embarrassing, 2-12, and 12, and they now sit at 500 on the season through 28 games, they're just two games back of the four seed. It's incredible. Like, right now, they are the 10th seed in the NBA. They would be the last play-in team if the season ended today. But they're just two games back of the four seed Phoenix Suns. So, it's not that bad. <laughs> It's going to be okay. Um, it's so early. They're lucky. I, I mean, the, I think the Warriors are lucky that so many other Western Conference teams are also struggling. But um, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. That's the West. That's the West. It's still anybody's yeah. for the taking, I think. Yeah. And, and they, like you mentioned, just how close it is. The Warriors can still climb up because, like you said, a lot of Western Conference teams are struggling. To me, it's still wide open. So that's definitely a positive. Way to find a positive, Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so tomorrow... Uh, the Warriors play a team that beat them at home not that long ago, and that is the Indiana Pacers. Um, any thoughts from that game? I know it, the Pacers looked good the last time they played. I believe this time uh, 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 Tyrese Halliburton is playing. Um, he actually was not playing last game, and instead his backup, uh, what was that kid's name? Was it Nemhard? Andrew Nemhard? Ate yeah, him up live. Oh. My God. So what are your feelings for this game, Kyle? And is, is, are they going to start the road trip 0-2? Are they going to bounce back? Uh, Clay Thompson will not play. Your thoughts on tomorrow's That's uh, literally game. what I was just about to look up is who's in and who's out on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And especially with a six-game road trip, is it just Clay Thompson out for sure? Because I wouldn't so be shocked if anyone else, they were going to try to rest. But yeah, so far, um, if it's just... Just Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins out. I still think, and especially if Tyrese Halliburton is playing, I still think this is going to be an uphill battle uh, for the Warriors. Uh, it's definitely concerning. And someone in the chat mentioned they could see the Warriors going 0-6 on this road trip, and I was Oof. trying to look up exactly what the schedule is. Um, Oof, I mean, the Warriors are struggling on the road, and they don't face any, you know, they go and face the Sixers. Like, that's not going to be an easy game. These aren't going to be easy games facing the New York teams, um, regardless of, you know, if they're struggling or not. I just – the Warriors still haven't beaten a team in the East on the road this season. Oh. Like, that's brutal in and of itself. And and I, that is just, I don't know. Tyrese Halliburton, too, I think could be a problem. So, I don't know. I don't want to make any hard predictions, but, you know, I thought – Looney really struggled in that game against the Pacers. And, you know, it was another game that I feel he like if the Warriors' lack of size becomes really noticeable and a huge disadvantage. Um, so that, I mean, I don't know. Basically, the 
last Pacers game went, and that was a big concern, was that I thought the Warriors' size, lack of size, was exposed because Looney can't play on stretch fives, stretch bigs, and he was virtually ineffective. And adding Tyrese Halliburton to the mix, you know, assuming Nemhard doesn't go off again, that's still another oh. player. And if he does go off again, then I think the Warriors are toast. Um, so I don't know. The, it, the game against the Pacers that the Warriors played was not promising. And I think just like based on personnel matchups, it could definitely be a challenge, especially if the Warriors are with that Wiggins and Clay. Ooh, yeah. And then, and then God, how bad was the officiating tonight? I mean, I think we, we saw, I, I saw counting after seven technicals. There might've been an eighth. Um, yeah, well, you know, they were I, counting I, it on the broadcast too. I remember six, seven, was there an eighth? Um, I mean, yeah, they I don't were know. like candy. It was ridiculous. It was, but it was also ridiculous. Uh, you know, a pair of those technicals came uh, when Stephen Curry kind of lost it. He does not lose his cool that often in a game. So when he does kind of react the way he did, um, usually it, I would hope the officials would kind of take notice of that. Um, but it, it is utterly asinine how few calls Stephen Curry and really the rest of the team gets. I mean, Jordan Poole gets hacked a lot. I don't think he's getting a fair number of free throw attempts. Stephen Curry, it's abysmal. It's atrocious. Uh, it's just, it's disturbing how few calls he gets. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're officiating tonight was awful. And I, you're right about Looney. He, he's there are certain teams that just really fluster him and and make him completely ineffective the Pacers are one of those teams and if you remember the playoffs last year like the Nuggets were one of those teams yep. Nikola Jokic was eating him alive um yeah there are just some teams that bother him for some reason um I do like Galen Callahan by the way bringing up uh Patrick Baldwin Jr it was great to see him that was another positive I know the numbers might not substantiate it but he has a good stroke man he looks good that's the future right he was there. Back I don't in his know. hometown, which is fun. He had a big crowd there. Um, good, good, you know, morale booster for. A yeah. Run. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you to everyone for the chat, uh, getting involved. Um, nights like these, you help. I promise you that. Um, I want to. I want to quickly before we go complain. First of all, I want to give a happy birthday shout out to uh, one of my favorite Warriors fans out there. Um, it is. Uh, did I say birthday? I'm sorry. I was. I wanted to say I hope she feels better. Her name is Crystal Wall oh. Crystal Wallace. So I hope you feel better soon. I know she's under the weather and she's a massively huge uh, Warriors fan. Uh, and then I'm really annoyed at the fact that for some reason this never used to happen. But we can't watch Warriors games when they're on TNT now. And I, look, I have nothing against Fitz and Klen Azubuki. I love them. They, and, I, and I've known Fitz. We go back over 20 years. Um, but when the Warriors are on national TV, I like that different perspective, um, that the national broadcasters bring. I also love watching a halftime show with Chuck and Shaq. Um, and you don't get that now. I, I, does that, does that bother you as much as it bothers me? Like it peeves me. I, I can't, I, it, that never used to happen. I think it started like a year ago. Does that bother you at all? Am I, am I the only one here griping with that? No, I agree. I enjoy <laughs> the tnt broadcast specifically um i like the broadcast team i think they're all ridiculous but but they're hilarious honestly charles barkley's hatred for the warriors like he's always going to say something asinine and like i personally am entertained by that um and i agree though i actually almost always tune into the national broadcast when the warriors are on a national platform because i do i enjoy hearing a different perspective and a different call than announcers at the end of the day and you know what are we missing that maybe an outside person sees. Um, so I, I think that's a fair, fair gripe. And I enjoy watching the national broadcast. I, I, yeah, I do too. So that's, I just wanted to bitch about that. I'm done. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Another post game show. Kylan, this might be it for the week for you, but we'll have you back for three days next week. This, this road trip kind of screws with the schedule because we can't have show uh, shows during the day when they're playing an East coast road game. It just doesn't make sense. So um, I don't know who my guest is going to be tomorrow, but um i'll miss you the rest of the week kylan thanks for uh joining me today um and again one more time crystal wallace hope you feel better soon dub nation don't worry the warriors are only two games back of the four seed anything else anything we need to promote mention there's still time you know there's still time they're only a couple games like you mentioned out of a four seed so this could still turn around it's not looking great right now being 500 <laughs> this far into the season but there's still time. Uh, and Absolutely. I will be back for three episodes next week. That's going to be huge. And hopefully we are talking 
talking about some wins on this road trip. Whoever yeah. said 0 and 6, you better not have spoke that into fruition. Um, hopefully the Warriors figure it out sooner than later and can beat an Eastern Conference team on the road for the first time this season. Like, Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's get some Moody minutes. I want to see some Moses Moody tomorrow. Let's hope that happens. Um, yeah, so we'll be back at it tomorrow. Kylan, love you. Thank you. Are we done? We good? Anything else? Thanks to everyone in the chat. I guess that's it. All right, folks. 14 and 14. That's where the Warriors stand. Tomorrow we're back at it at Indiana. Good night, folks. Take care. Later.